Lopez. Steve on. Dude, I got to tell you, because um, we haven't really talked, but like I started going to a personal trainer. Um, uh-huh. I, I like this guy a lot, but the thing that's I like about him the most is like, I tell him like, hey, it's weird. So I go to the gym and like, I'll go real hard and like, I'll just start hurting like right here. Like, like, and like my, like, I don't know what this is called. You're like elbow pit. Oh yeah. I, I don't know what that's called. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, elbow he's pit. like, come over here. And like, he'll like have me do a stretch. And then like, it's like with my neck and he's like, oh, your nerves are all kind of jacked up. And like instantly I'm just like, oh, like. Like I feel this like crazy pain going orgasm? through my arm and my neck. Yeah, orgasm through my oh. neck and my arm. Um, but no, it's just like you know, it's like I have like these crazy pains and injuries and stuff. Like like all these years, and then like in thirty seconds, someone's like, "Oh yeah, here, I know what's wrong. Come over here, let's fix that real quick." And you're like, "Fuck, where were you like twenty years ago when I was actually playing sports and broken?" You know, shitty coaches I oh. had. But anyway, well. It's probably better that you find him as like an old man than even when you were a kid. Even though, yeah, it would have been nice, but at least you found him as like an old man. Yeah. Hey, now, now that I'm broken, also, by the way, now uh, that I'm broken, he can fix me. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So it's it's going well. No, it's good. Um, Excellent. We talked about it a little bit last week, but um, it's like. I enjoy, like, I'm only going two days a week right now. And, like, those other days, I'm like, oh, I'm not going mm-hmm. today. kind of wish I was going, you know? Oh, and it's like. You get sad. But, no, and it's it's multiple things because it's like, I also, like, he's trying to, like, grow and scale and trying to figure things out with his business and how to market and how to do this. And, like, I could talk about that shit, like, oh, forever right. and all day. Like, he's, like, he doesn't have yeah. ideas. I got ideas. I could spit there all fucking day. And, like, he's also that person that, like, wants to soak it all up he's like please tell me all the things what ideas do you have please and it's like i want to like because i was i was telling him he's like yeah i just don't know what to do next and i was like well have you thought about what you want this business to be like in like 10 years like what do you what do you see like is the what's the dream and he's like i don't know i never thought about it and i was like we well, gotta start with the dream and yeah. then you just work your way backwards to the steps that it's gonna take to get there you know i was like you can't just go like well what do i do today and then like I hope it gets somewhere, you know, you got to like have somewhere, a path, yeah. you know, to go to and like, but he doesn't think like that. He's just like, that's never been his thing. He doesn't build businesses. Like he doesn't, you know what I mean? So it's been, it's been interesting. Yeah. So it's like, I like, I, I also feel like, <laughs> what do you feel like? Man, we're having some pause issues, I guess. I know it sucks. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> but what do you feel like? Um, do we need to, well, so I also feel like people don't normally think about that. It's like people, you know, start a business with the idea of the thing that they want to do and just start forging ahead, which there, I mean, that's, that's good, but there's a huge amount of value in also like recognizing where you want to be. And I think it's a good reminder for people too. like, I mean, I, I think I'm going to say I, but I feel like we're both guilty of from time to time of like you continue to move forward, but you also have to like reassess where you want to be in X years, especially if like, or, you know, ideas change or whatever, or we're doing something different. I mean, yeah, I think that's pretty normal. I mean, would that affect your future? I mean, if I just stopped that sentence right there, the answer is yes. But, would it affect your business? No, nah, it just affect who I was banging. It wouldn't uh, affect poorly worded. You know, the, I'd still be building the same businesses. I think I don't, but you know, but I don't know. But that is something you interesting. You could still be banging the same people. I could totally. Um, I would just go by. I'm a yeah. fucking. I identify as toast or something like that. But anyway, uh, this oh, makes me think I of heard something. That one. Um, I and I, I read this a long time ago. Uh, in like a Mark Cuban book or something like that. But I'm curious your thoughts on it. Cause it's like what you're bringing up with like my trainer, okay. right? Like he's like, it's his passion, right? Like he loves like, you know, like training and being physically fit and doing all this stuff. Right. But I think that it could be a really bad thing to try to build a business on your passion. Right. 
like not right. that it, not that it wouldn't make you happy, but like there's the thing that makes money and there's the thing that you love to do. And I think yeah. there, it's like fucking it's got to be like magic and you won the lottery if those two things come together and they're the same thing. You know, and so uh-huh. I'm curious your thoughts on that. Like, like, cause do you feel like you could like build a huge business and make lots of money and do like be happy if you built the thing around the stuff that makes you the happiest? Or do you think that that ruins the thing that makes you happy? Yeah, it's a good question. So it's, I think you, I mean, those are like two different camps, right? There's the, the, the camp or the line of thinking or the dream for a long time has been like, you know, do the thing you love doing and you'll never, you'll never hate life or whatever. Never work a day in your life. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Okay. Um, yeah, great. I'm just going to walk around and fucking eat and make (laughs) money. (laughs) Um, but recently there's been this more kind of like hustle version of that, you know, where it's like, uh, um, basically just saying like, that's stupid, like work and you don't have to lo- love your work. I mean, you don't have to be passionate about the work that you do. Um, be passionate about making money so that you can do the things you want to do. So there might be like three different sort of scenarios here. There's the, you're doing what you love and it makes you money. There's the not doing what you, um, love well maybe this is on the other side not doing what you love but it gives you the money so that you can do the things that make you happy and then the probably shitty version of that is doing something you hate (laughs) so that you can make the money to do things that hopefully you want to do i don't know if that's in the middle i don't know but i think that one is like the one whether you get do the thing you love or you do the thing that allows you to do the things you love you know you love the one you don't ever want to do is just the I fucking hate life. Wake up and go do a thing and go back to bed. Um, I agree. I mean, I do have some, you know, I I agree, mm -hmm. but I still have another question though on that. Like, but do you think if I kind of didn't answer your question? No, no, no. You, you did. I think you just broke it up into pieces, but I still am curious of if you were building a business on, on your passion, do you think that that ruins your passion? I think it certainly can. Um, but I don't think that it has to, um, I haven't really like thought this through entirely in my head, but if I'm just sort of riff just a little bit, I think the things that can ruin it are, um, not managing your time properly because let's just, I'm, I'm riffing here. I'm just sort of, uh, up, talking out of my ass here, but, but here's the thing. There's a thing you love doing. And I don't know, we'll just say, we'll just say it's fishing. So you love fishing and you want to start a business that's fishing. What well, goes from like, maybe you fish when you want to, or maybe you even have like a schedule where you fish at a certain time. Um, but as soon as you take on clients, like there's a couple of things that happen. One, that thing that was for you that you love doing now is for someone else. And there could be a ton of joy in that. Like I enjoy you know, helping people learn and do some of the things that I've done, but there's also the, now it's a commitment. It's not an, just like, Hey, can you catch up Saturday or whatever? The other thing that goes along with that and the whole time commitments are the actual running the business pieces of it. So like you don't just go fishing and make money. You've got to like do invoices. You've got to have accounting. You've got to do all that. You know, you've got to, you know, manage the calendar. You got to make sure that you have clients you know, well in in advance, it can't just be like, well, I'm running low on money. I need a client tomorrow. Hey, you want to go fishing or whatever? So there's just all the business pieces of that. However, if, well, and so just to kind of top that off. So what I think can happen and probably happens in those instances where somebody is no longer likes doing what they loved doing before is just the overcommitment. So now it's the fishing or whatever plus the running the business, plus the taking care of the kids, spending time with the family. Um, but, and then it's like, now the fishing thing is like, fuck, I've got to go. I I don't have time to do, to hang out with the boys and cook something on the grill or have a beer. I've got to go fishing. And I think 
I guess all that to wrap all that up, I think the thing that, and this is just a kind of a sort of a guess here, but the, the, probably the biggest thing that could make someone not like a thing that they love doing before is time and overcommitment. No, I'm with you. Cause I, I think what, I mean, I think the way you're answering the question is that turning a passion into a business, the pieces of the business can ruin the passion. Right. Because it's, it can, it's not, it's not, it's just not to, just to be, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, just to kind of be more clear though, if you, I think maybe there's an opportunity if you understand going into it, all the pieces of it, which kind of is hard to do before you just get started. But if you understand the pieces of it and you can account for how you're going to manage that time for the business with the passion part of it, I think there's a chance that that doesn't necessarily have to ruin it. I just think that when you don't think about that and then you start doing the thing you love to do and then it's like you layering on top without getting more time or having accounted for the right amount of time. I think that's what makes it suck. I think that's what could make it suck. For me, I, I, I mean, this is me personally. Like I think it's, it kills it because it's like, it's not even about like, I think about those things and I know that I have to do all those things. But I also know there's only so much time in the day and now it it took a thing that I love that was fun and made it a job. Right. And to in a way it kills it right for me. Like, and so the reason I was even Mm -hmm. thinking that like we, me and my wife were talking this weekend about, you know, like what we're going to do next and what the next business is and all that kind of stuff. And for the last few years, like I've just been on this whole piece of just like, unsexy shit that I don't give a fuck about. Like I, it's not my passion whatsoever. It is great business, Mm -hmm. right? Where it's just like, I want things that make money so that I then have time and money to go do things that I think are fun and that I want to do and travel and do this and do whatever. Right. And so it's like, like I used to try so hard to like make, be happy and like make it like a passion or like, uh, it's like a one, like I want to create a job or a startup around baseball just so I can be around baseball. Cause I love baseball, you know? And like, yeah. Or it's like, I, I got to do something where it's like, I'm in art and I'm making art and I'm teaching people to do art. And I'm like, and it's just like, fuck, it's just, it just kills everything for me. I mean, you're right. There's probably people in the yeah. world that can figure it out and they've turned their business in or their passion into a business. They did it successfully and they're fucking awesome and I'm just not them. Like every time I've ever tried to do anything, I fucking just hate that thing that I used to love now. You know? I'm just like, yeah, I don't do that anymore. Yeah. It's whatever. So yeah. anyway, I was just curious. Like, cause well, I, it's because you have I, to do it. Yeah. It, well, it's also it's just like when when money's involved, it's just it's a whole other thing, you know, where it's just like it's mm-hmm. like money is stress. Right. It's like if you have it or if you don't have it, it's stress. Right. And then it's like the whole point of passion is happy de-stress. And so you're like moving the things together. And to me, it just is like this fucking chaos stress ball, you know? And so I'm just like, whatever, I'm not doing that anymore. But no, I was just curious because <laughs> I've been talking to at least to you've my, tried to, it. No, I've been talking to my trainer about everything he's doing. And like, it's, it's hard. Right. Cause it's like, I don't want to like, crush somebody's dreams you know and i think that what he's doing could actually turn into something really cool and really big and something i haven't seen before um he just doesn't think that big he thinks like how do i get that next client you know and i'm thinking like how do you fucking franchise this make it international you know kind of thing and and it just got me thinking about Mm -hmm. that like this is like you can tell how happy he is because it's small and it's just one-on-one with a person and it's so like it's very passionate for him you know, where it's like, yeah, it, well, it's, it's like you, you, I wonder when he takes a step back and he's like a manager and not having this personal relationship with people and seeing their progress and seeing how they change, but he is making a bunch of money. Is he happy? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think it's like one of those things that man, when you start getting older, you're, you're having that whole, like money doesn't make you happy. Like fucking questioning everything type of, scenario going in your head and like i just have that in my head right now maybe i'm just high 
from all well, the medication. I think I there's know. a, I think there's a, it's possible. I think there's a, another thing would be how much you scale it. Like if you, cause you and I have both worked at companies that have been small and gotten bigger. And I, I hear this pretty regularly where it's like when it was fun, even mm-hmm. though it was like really hard or whatever, there's something about, you know, the, a small company versus like, I think part of it is like, you know, it, and I know like, you know, the word family is like not really like the right word, but it's like, you're almost like this little family because it's like a small group, you know, everybody, everybody knows what everybody's working on. There's like this fun component to it. Also, you, uh, you could say get to, or have to like work on lots of different types of things, which keeps it, you know, keeps it from b- getting monotonous. So I don't know. Cause you said that about your, your trainer and it's like, you know, right now he's stoked and he's just got a couple of clients. It, you know, it's just kind of interesting to think like, how big does it get? Can it stay fun? And you say, we're not growing. It's kind of like the 37 signals guys, right? They've always stayed really small, uh-huh. even though they've amassed a lot more customers. It was always a big thing of theirs to like not grow into this massive company. Yeah. Which I, I dig that, right? Like that's the other, that's, I think that's the next step of the conversation that we're having. Right. And like me and you have had this, this talk a little bit. It's like, what's enough? Like what's, where's the actual line? Yeah. Cause there's always more, but what's enough, you know, like what's enough to be happy. And that's what I think the 37 signals guys have done really well. They were like, this is exactly mm-hmm. what we want to do. Our company, like we're not going to like, they're going to turn away companies if they say, sorry, we're not, we're not big enough for you. We're not going to grow. We're not going to be this ginormous enterprise company. That's not what we're looking to do. We don't want to have right. more than 50 employees. We want to have, be able to see everybody, you know, like, and the weird, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm like a fanboy of them, but like, they also just like always want to redo their product. And so like they, they always constantly mm-hmm. rebuild their product as a team versus like adding features and adding <clears throat> features. They rebuild the whole fucking thing, which to me is awesome. Cause you're just like, man, yeah. as a designer, we see something, we get it finished and it launches and we're like, yeah, it's cool. But now I got other ideas that I think that would make this awesome now that it's done, you know? And you're like, I yeah. want to do the next version. And you're always like looking to push it, you know? But anyway, sorry. Yeah. I'm derailing. I just, I don't know what we're derailing from. I, I don't know. I think we're but, good. I mean, I, I know. I was curious well, about that. Hey, I just, why I don't like we your talk perspective. A... Oh, thanks, man. Well, hey, why don't we uh, talk a little bit about what's in the news? Um, Elon buying Twitter, which is crazy town. Crazy, crazy. Well, it's okay. The thing that's crazy to me is literally it happened so fast. It was like not even a month ago where I he's know. like, Twitter's garbage. It's fucking stupid. I'm going to go build my own. And it, it felt like the week after he bought like 10% or something like that. And was just like, haha, just kidding. I'm buying ten yeah. percent of Twitter. It was, or you know, it makes you wonder. Like this, is what I mean, we talked about this before. It's like, was that just like a brilliant chess move? Talk shit about it, drop the price, like the stock price goes down, and then buy some, mm-hmm. and then, but then that would probably make the price go back up because now Elon's associated with it, and then buy the whole fucking thing. Like I, I don't, I don't get the thinking of it, but. I don't know. It's super interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how all that went down. <clears throat> I mean, I know like what you're saying. There was, there was a couple of milestones there, but, um, as far as it happening really fast. Yeah. Like I didn't really think it was for one. I wasn't really sure that that was actually going to happen. I thought part of it, I just felt like it was like shit talk. Like, even though he's like saying it, I still felt like, you know, it's like shit talk. That guy's like a big shit talker. He is, but it's also you, how like people feel so it's how we do customer mm-hmm. service though. Like where, like we were talking about like, Oh, this thing's fucking broken. I'm going to get on Twitter and be yeah. like, fuck you, Samsung. Why isn't this thing working? And they'll like, Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> sir. Let me fix that yeah. for you. It felt like that's what Elon was doing. Like, totally. Hey, give me these features motherfuckers. And turned out he's like, no, you guys suck. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to fix it. Yeah, which I'm glad you said Samsung because uh, I fucking bought the most expensive TV ever, and it's been like the 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 least 
high quality TV I've ever had. I'd rather get my, I'd rather get another TCL. But anyway, we're not going to go down that path. Let's stick with it. Uh, so the things, so I've kind of wondered, and what's funny is I've seen some people that are like, um, a, a friend of ours or a friend of mine that's a designer wrote some post and it was like, you know, I've met a lot of great friends and, you know, in real life from Twitter, you know, it was, it's been a really great, you know, time getting to know you all. And I was like, okay, that's written in a weird way. Like, I was like, what are you leaving Twitter because you hate Elon or you think it's going to just like become shitty or something? And they and they wrote their response. I feel like, I feel like my assumption was more accurate. I think this, I'm guessing, I don't know. Uh, felt like it was more of a, I hate Elon kind of statement, but it's weird. Like that people are so that they, they freaking hate, like, I don't know. Yeah. The guy's weird, but dude, the guy is, I've, I mean, not obvious. I have actually become a bigger fan over the years, um, of Elon's just because look at what the fuck he's do, doing. I mean, yes, he's got companies and teams, but like he's the head He's the figurehead of all this amazing shit that's one of the only people taking us actually into the future. See, <laughs> I think I'm, the guy's fucking I'm mean. glad you said that because that's my biggest, like, obviously I, I had my Tesla, so, like, I was a Tesla fanboy for a long time. But I'm an Elon fanboy yeah. for exactly, like, what you just said. Like, everyone complains about all of these giant industries and how they're fucked up and, like, legally, mm-hmm. like, they're just all these loopholes and, like, like, healthcare and you know like insurance and whatever like commodity type shit right and like it takes a startup like a stupid person that's like i don't give a fuck about the giant trillion dollar companies i'll be i'll be in my garage and i think i can beat them it takes somebody like him to take on these massive industries and not to just take them on but to fucking blow them out of the water and to like literally, yeah. I mean, dude, like no other car company was going to make an electric car for GM. None of them. And then they're oh, like, no. fuck Tesla's fucking everywhere. What the hell's going on guys? And like, cause I just watched the Ford, uh, their, their show about their truck oh, yesterday. I just read about it. I just read about that. They were, they were planning on doing like 30,000 vehicles and now they're going to do 150,000 yeah. EV trucks, F one fifty. <laughs> Dude, so I kind of want one of those. No, I, I dig it. I actually like it. So, but here was the funny thing. Sorry, no, we'll get back to the Elon, but it's kind of it's in part of it. Um, you know how no, like no, this is good. How Elon like will do uh, like all these like parties like shows where they're like announcing the Tesla truck or announcing Starlink, and they do these like huge events, right? And like the yeah. the vibe of the event is like it's like a club right like it like is like fucking drones making faces and like doing all this shit and like lights everywhere and DJs and then they cut to the crowd and the crowd's all people that own Tesla stock and own Teslas and they're like yeah we love you Elon <laughs> you know and it's like everyone's so fucking happy and it's awesome right Ford's event yeah. for the truck was oh it was like the Microsoft they tried <laughs> they tried to do that they had the lights they had the stage they had like the big place and then they had like the token old guy get up on stage with his suit and he's like, yeah, I know oh, I want to thank this one person. And then like the whole audience is like factory workers that are like, we've been yeah. fucking working all day. Now you're going to make us sit up here and take credit for everything that we do because we're the ones in here putting these fucking <laughs> trucks together. <laughs> no, dude. And then they'd cut to them yeah. after something and they'd be like. Like they did not fucking care. No one was excited. Even the people that were on stage were just like, yeah, it's my great honor to showcase this new generation of the Ford F-150. It was just like, it was so dry, but with flashing lights and shit everywhere. It was just like, it was comical to like do the comparison. I can't help, but that reminds me of the, uh, the Microsoft, like one of the launches of like Windows, I don't know, it was like Windows 95 or something. I know you've seen it where Steve Ballmer, Steve Ballmer. is up there and he's sweating he's his like, ass off. Yeah. <laughs> sweating his ass off. And then they like, he like jumps and like, like 
twists his ankle or something, but he's like got so much adrenaline that he keeps like hobbling around or maybe not even adrenaline as much as just like, Oh, I can't fall down and look like an idiot. Cause I just tried to jump, <laughs> but it's the most hilarious thing ever. No Microsoft ones, but see, but that's the funny though. It's I actually enjoy the Microsoft ones because it's like, they were like, <laughs> like almost like satire. Like they were like, they're, they yeah. they know they, didn't they, didn't they be know satire. they're fucking nerd. <laughs> I know, but they know they're nerds. Like they know this is nerdy, but they're fucking excited about like the nerdiness of it. You know, they're just like fuck yeah, <laughs> computer chips, motherfucker. You know, like they're fucking pumped about it. No one was pumped this at this like, Ford thing, dude. It was it was <laughs> just like eight old white guys with no rhythm up on stage dancing. Love it. Well, yeah. No, that's even better. Oh, sorry. Actually, you got moves. I sorry. saw them at your wedding. Or not your wedding, but well, anyway. Yeah. I was in a um, dance crew. Did I ever tell you that? Yeah, so back. What? Hold on. Yeah. We do have to come back to Elon. You were in a dance crew? So in high school, I was in a thing called Captain's Crew because we were the Poteet Pirates, right? And so there's there's the football players, there's the cheerleaders, and then there's the Captain's Crew. And the Captain's Crew is like, do okay. pep, do we do pep rallies? We do like stomps. We did like all kinds of dance routines and stuff. <laughs> like we had some guys that could break. Holy so, shit! Yeah, we had like can't a, believe I didn't know. We that. had fucking uh, windbreaker suits that were all pimp. We know we'd all wear like our you know our white Air Force Ones or some Adidas or something with them. Hell yeah, that's where you, you come in and do the the shaking robot, dude. I do I do it all. <laughs> I, I always I was I always wanted right. to be like a break dancer and then I just kept getting bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger and so just like <laughs> imagining my big ass fucking spinning on the ground taking people out like at some place dude so haven't you uh, haven't you seen that video where uh the is like a pretty big, big like bear. I don't know yeah. Mexican or Filipino dude yeah, yeah, and he's doing like the arm windmill thing. I don't know what it's called, but you know what I'm talking yeah, about. He jumps like on his arm. No, I know exactly which video you're talking about because when I saw it, it like gave me hope. I was like, if he can do it, I can do it. I fucking, I was like, man, I need to find like a breakdancing teacher like right now. So yeah, that's my, well, he's, that's my next He thing. also isn't like a kid. He looks like, no, he totally. looks like he's like, he's got to be in his like mid to late thirties. So there is a chance, bro. I'll, I'm man, doing it. I'm looking forward to I'm this. Doing it. I'm going to, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. It'll be a, it'll be one of our episodes. It'll be the new intro. Me breaking. Dude, I'm on board. I'm kind of, I want to kind of break dance too, bro. Um, all right. But all right, back to Elon. Back to Elon. So buying Twitter. So this thing looks like it's moving forward. Um, so I don't, I'm really, I think for me, I'm mostly just like, I'm a, like sitting in the sidelines, just really interested. Like I have no like strong feelings uh, either way, I just really haven't been. I love the concept of Twitter. To me, I kind of romanticize this idea of like, you know, you know, having that type of communication. I think it's really cool, but I don't really utilize it. Uh, we used to back in the day, but um, but I do think it's you know, it's been so interesting to see to follow Twitter as a company and follow the technology and just see how it's grown and how it's being used. And I'm really just interested mostly in seeing what happens over like the next, say, six months. I'm, I'm with you. Like, is it going to be a train wreck that I can't stop watching or is it going to be amazing and I'm going to start using it again? The Here's here's the, the – do you own any Twitter stock? No. See, that's, that's where do I'm you? curious. Of. I do. And I am curious what – happens because a lot of the things that he wants to do are awesome. They're, they're definitely thing, emotional things that I would want to have happen. Cause I I'm the opposite. I, I kind of hate Twitter. I hate Facebook. I hate all of it because it's just like this breeding ground for fucking trolls and hate and fucking negativity. And it's well, just, yeah. it's ridiculous. Right. Cause it's like a hundred to one, a thousand to one, it's like negative to positive. Like, it's just like, I don't even want to look at it. It's like watching the news these so, days, you know? It's just like, it's so don't even watch it. It's just all they're going to show yeah. you is horrible <clears throat> shit. 
Well, why don't you go into some of the things that you know of? Because that's what I'm also interested in and how he, what he might be able to change based on what he said that he wants well, to change. Well, so that's the thing. It's like they're talking. He's there's two things. It's like one, he can't believe he hates ads, right? So, but he still can't believe that they don't make they barely make any money, right? Compared to like the amount of engagement that they have in his eyes, like it should be making like 10x, yeah. 100x what it's making right now revenue wise. Um, but then. He's also wants to like open source all of the code of Twitter so that every developer in the world can like kill bots and like all kinds of, you know, like, which is oh, right. totally good. I get, I get all that, but open source and profit are like two ends of the spectrum. Right. Most of the time, unless you're like, yeah. I mean, some companies have figured it out that by making a no, third right. party, like no. automatic did that, like WordPress is automa- is open source. You know, and so they made automatic, which is a services business on top of the open source thing. But Twitter's already a publicly traded company. So it's like, it's kind of, I don't know. I'm, I'm with you. I'm very interested to see what happens. Um, but I'm also curious if it's cause he's obviously a hype train. So the stock price is going to go all over the place. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. It's going to go up. It's going to, I'm not even worried about it, but it's like, I'm curious how you turn what they're doing now fix all the issues that they have and and in in turn make much more revenue. I'm curious where the revenue part comes into play because I don't know because he said he doesn't like ads. So what else is there? Well, oh, well, what I've heard is, uh, you know, and this is just a bunch of random shit I've been reading. Um, Not even that much random shit, but I think there's been conversation about maybe some different tiers of subscription models. Um, which maybe there's a free tier or whatever. I don't know. But I think the biggest thing I think will be combating all the bots because a lot of that thousand to one negative, uh, bullshit. I, I, I believe is like mostly like bots. Um, and yeah, that makes it really shitty, but I also think, so as far as the hitting ads, like I don't actually like hate ads Um, there's a long time ago, back when, uh, early on in the Evernote days, there used to be this little square down at the bottom. If you're using the free version, Uh I've paid for it for too long. So I don't know, you know, what kind of advertising they do now, but the most interesting thing was that I got ads that were actually like all this stuff that was just like super relevant to shit I cared about. And I realized that, you know, so the way that it worked for Evernote was because it was like early tech adopters really were the people using it to begin with. And so, you know, tech companies, you know, cool tech companies or whatever would put ads down there. I realized the way that you get good ads these days is by shit tracking all of your stuff. And now, you know, that's invasive and we're trying not to do that. So having relevant good ads is probably really difficult, but if they're good, like I don't hate them. Now I do hate when they're like sponsored tweets and they're like every five tweets or whatever, it gets pretty annoying, but so I don't know, man, that's interesting. Um, Cause, um, mm-hmm. I do like, I, I'm that person. I'm, uh, I'm totally fine with giving you all of my information. Just show me good ads, right? Like show me shit that I actually would buy. Right. You know, and like, I'll give you everything. You don't have to like scrape my fucking tweets. Like, I'll just tell you, I'll fucking let you have every bit of information about me. I'm not worried about my privacy concerns. As long as you give me good ads and then I'll buy shit, you know, but like, it's a win win. <laughs> right. Like I get good ads, I'll buy it. And then you get, you know, the commission from my purchase done, you know? So I don't know, but I don't know. It's interesting. I'm also, well, inter- so go ahead. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh, no. I was going to go talk about other Elon nope. things, and but I'm curious if you're still talking about Twitter. Well, so the other – yeah, I still was. There was a few more things. So a couple of more things that he basically, from what I've read, that he wants to change. Some of this is on Axios that I've read. So two big changes that would be different from the historical Twitter is long-form tweets – and, um, they did go up to like a 280 character limit, um, from 140. Uh, I still like, you know, I don't know. 
I, I, to me, I'm, I'm unsure how that's going to change it. What I would hate is like endlessly long form tweets. I don't know how well, I feel about a, that. Cause then you're just a tweet storm is a whole medium post. A tweet. So it's like, yeah. it's become so normal now to have like 50 tweets all together, which is literally like your 3000 word essay, you know? So it's like, at so this point, why what not? would be interesting? What would be interesting? Like, I don't mind the tweet threads actually, because it doesn't, it starts out, they still have to have concise, like singular thoughts that fit within like a short paragraph. And that way you read the first one. And if you're interested, you go to the thread and each one of them is kind of, I don't know, to me that helps me kind of digest long, long tweet tweets, I guess. Um, it'd be interesting to see how they design something like that. I think but the other thing he okay. wants to add is an edit button. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that though is just because, Hey, we fucking you listen fuck to people. Like, no, it's been asked for, for yeah. like a decade, you know, like, and everyone, well, yeah, like, I meant like in terms yeah. of like the, I meant like in terms of the person wanting to edit, like it's always the worst when you publish something and then you see something's not quite right. And what makes it worse is when like, you know, people start responding to it or liking it or whatever. And you're like, well, now I have to fucking leave that even though I spelled they're wrong and everybody half of the replies are going to be people talking shit about it's, me spelling, it's, using it's the wrong e-i-r not y-r-e stupid theory. idiot <laughs> no yeah so i don't okay i don't know if i get i don't know if you're gonna be able to hear this but the, so i was listening to this whole thing about twitter this morning and it totally you know how my brain works right normally it's like a movie or like you say a word movies and I, it's a movie yeah. or a tv show that popped in my head but what popped into my head this morning because uh -huh. they were talking about like Twitter content, like it's all about it's all about emotion. It's not about content. It's like you, it's like we don't even we're not we're not even telling the story. We're trying to like get somebody emotional about this thing, right? And when you do that, that's right. what does well. So I don't know if this will if you can hear this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to play this. What a, what a insightful tweet this is! Happy Friday to all my followers. It's Trevor Noah show. But the Daily Show. Thank you for uh -huh. this poignant message. What a modern day Shakespeare. I wouldn't have thought of celebrating my Fridays until I read this. But it would make the people happy. It's just like, you know, it's like, happy Friday. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's not what you do on Twitter, okay? Twitter is for hate. Okay, you don't <laughs> post this stuff. You gotta be controversial. You should say something like, you should say something like, Fridays are racist. <laughs> Okay, that's the most ridiculous thing. Fridays are not racist. Now we're talking about it. See, it's engagement. No, Fridays are not racist. <laughs> Fridays, are Fridays racist. are racist. Yes, this powers me. No, what yes. the hey, hey, yes. Fridays are not racist. You can't just say it. <laughs> but literally, I was, I just saw that at this point. So I rewatched it. I was like, oh my god, like it breaks down Twitter so perfectly to where it's just like. I'm not even like sharing at least like, you know, when it all got started, it was like, yeah. it was stupid. We're sharing what we were having for fucking breakfast and like, Hey, going to this bar tonight or whatever. It was like actual information. Now it truly is just like, who can I piss off today? Who is like, I'm going to make a joke, yeah. but they're going to take it seriously. How many of those can I do today? And yeah. like, it's, it's like an art form of fucked the upness, troll farm. you know? Yeah. It's like, it's, uh, I hate everything about it, but I do, I do have a theory. <laughs> have I told you my theory of social media uh -huh. and like what, what it's going to turn into? In no, the I don't think so. I think we talked about this, but I don't know if we talked about it on the podcast because, our, uh, All right. Essex started playing Roblox. My kids play Roblox. Right. And one of the very interesting things about Roblox is even though you're fucking little kids playing, you can set up a private server. And it's not very difficult, yeah. even for my eight-year-old, to set up his private server, invite only the people he wants. He, now he doesn't get bombarded with a bunch of fucking people chatting with him and trying to, like, friend request him and all this kind of stuff. And I think that is what social media is going to become. I think that, like, I will have, like... It's, you mean it's going to become the metaverse, basically? Well, metaverse, but still, the metaverse is still, like, now it's opening up even more. I'm oh. saying it's gonna yeah, it's yeah, gonna yeah. more tribes, right? Like um, when yeah. what was it called? Google Circles or whatever. I got you. Like that the their Google social yeah. network that died. 
there they had this diagram that I always thought was really perfect. It was like, here's me and my friends. Here's me and my family. Here's me and my coworkers. Here's me and like people that I wish to know that I follow on the internet. And everybody else can suck it. I don't give a fuck about any of you. Y'all can go fucking to hell. I don't care what y'all are doing. Because I have these tight knit groups here that I actually care about. I love the things they post. I love like the things they say. And even if I don't, I'm totally cool to talk shit with them and fucking rip on them. Because they're my family. They're my friends, you know? And I think that is like, Uh it's, it's like, it's going to be this privatized. It's like, it's not going to keep opening up. I think it's going to like turn into like a little safe where it's just us, you know, like even like this podcast, it's like, what if it was like, yeah, we weren't sharing it to the world. We only had this tight knit group of people that could like come in and see, you know, like it's like a private show, you know? And I don't know. I, I, I can see it. I feel like the, the we opened the box. And I kind of see what you're saying. Like, and it's going to well, come back a little bit. I think that, I think it's uh that's like a little more natural for humans as well, right? Like you create these little yes, yeah, the tribes. Whether you want to call it tribes or yeah. whatever, because like you know, and some sometimes they overlap. I think that's really interesting, and but it's like when I one of the first tech companies I worked at. Like we had, like we would use Twitter actually to like communicate across the company um, just because it wasn't, it wasn't what it is today. And it was like only geeks were using it or whatever. And so we'd be at our, in our office and we'd still be like tweeting at each other and have the whole company like, you know, having communications. But then like I'd have my designer buddies and we would, saw, you know, a handful of us were on Twitter and we would have communication going and so we could all see each other's shit. We'd all, I don't know. I think that is pretty interesting. Um, and I think you're, I think you're onto something there. I, like it's, it's just a weird, what makes that seem complex is like the overlaps and the redundancies. Like, have you ever done that where you're like, you tweet or not tweet even, but like message one group and you're like, well, I need to message this other group now or whatever. Every day. And you have like two conversations e- going on every day. Thing. All of our text messages that like, yeah, like me and you are on multiple group text messages. And oh you're yeah. Like, okay. So like, well, I sent right. that to them already. I don't want to send the same thing to them, but these other people need to see it. So I need to send it over there. Yeah. You know, every day I, I go through that, but it's like, that's actually a really good, uh, like example of what I'm talking about. Like our group text messages, we've got multiple group text yeah. messages. And those are important people to us or we wouldn't be on those, you know? And so, but the content is different. Like I send different stuff to you in a certain group. Oh yeah. It would be in another group, you know, one group at least that we share together that never needs to, that content never needs to be leaked out. I, I, so (laughs) what's funny about that is our, our friend Amet tends to always find the most ridiculous things to send us. And I send it straight to my team and I literally call it, I go, Hey, here's a Mets daily. And I literally, I send it to my team. I was like, here's what he sent today. Cause it's always yeah. so crazy and obscure that I'm just like, Oh God, there's no yeah. way I would have found this on my own. So thank you, Amet, for like sharing your knowledge. Plus you're like, you're re- relieving yourself. Of yeah. Yeah. This guilt. wasn't you're me. Like, this is a guy I know says I mean, this shit. Well, <laughs> that's always the funny thing. Cause it's like, I'm that person that's like, I don't have a filter. I already post and share like too much shit. And so when this goes even more extreme than me, they're like, whoa. And I'm like, no, 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 it wasn't me. You know, I still have a limit. Yeah. You know, it's way up there, but I have one. Just to be clear, I don't want to murder kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other conversation. We can bring Curtis into this. He He's not, yeah. he's not a kid's guy. Uh, he sends me all these videos <laughs> of like, he's like, okay. he's like, me. <laughs> it'll say something like, oh, uh, when I hear a kid's the sound of a kid within like 500 feet and it just shows a guy running as fast as he can to the camera and it just kicks the shit out of it. And, and like, that's it. So he doesn't like children. That's an easy way to say that. <laughs> he, he needs to, well, it's not really a show. I just, you remember like the, how many kids could you fight? Yes. Like it was like, I would, God, okay. That would yeah. Be it so, was back in the, we need the, to do this. It would be amazing to try. It's just not, you know, right. You can't do that. I mean, if they signed a (laughs) waiver, 
and their parents signed a waiver, couldn't you? I'm pic- I'm so. picturing all the kids so. in my kids MMA class that actually can like fight a little bit. Uh-huh. You know, so they're not just like the like yeah. random toddler that's just like barely walking and you're just fucking punching them. It's like kids that punch all day long and like, you know, so like I feel like that makes it Well, right. Feel and once okay. there's the enough enough of them. Yeah. Like there's like, there's a multiplier. Can they take over? Can yeah. they kick your ass? So right? it's like, yeah, you could take 5, yeah. but could you take 25? You know? And I don't know. I feel like I feel like this is a show. This is like I, I, this is, I'm with you. I feel you know like uh there's like MMA right and UFC and all that kind of stuff and then like uh-huh. like the international version of that on YouTube takes it to another level because then there's like yeah, totally. bare knuckle farm you know like boxing on YouTube and like it's taken to another level. That's what this is gonna be. <laughs> bare knuckle farm. Yeah, boxing. it's gonna be just like this YouTube show yeah. of just like could you kick this how many kids could you kick their ass? And like every kid equals like a hundred dollars. And so it's like, you're trying to get to a million and the kids just keep fucking coming at you from nowhere. And then there's like a certain rule where yeah. it's like either if your back hits the ground or like you tap out or I don't know, there's gotta be some kind of rule for how you lose, but, but I'm, I'm into this. How do we, uh, I like get some this producers idea for this. I like one? this idea. Netflix. We just have to figure out a way that like, <laughs> Yeah, hook us up. We got great ideas. I feel like this is where like the, the rule would have to be that you can't just punch them in the head. It's like if you push them onto their back, we've got to figure out some way that's it's not necessarily realistic, but for the sake of the game, you know, it's like what would work. Because I actually want to see this happen. There's a video. How many kids could there's you a fight? video that I posted on my my crazy stories that I post of like a kid, a guy that's like working like at uh-huh. a daycare. Or something, and he's literally like, there's like 20 kids, and he's just going around, just like pushing that one down, and throwing this thing at that one, knocks him back, and just like kicking this one, <laughs> not like hurt kick, but like knock them down. They're kick. like playing, yeah, I've yeah, seen but, that. but <laughs> he's like, Sorry. like has the ball, and he's like, fluk, but it's chunks yeah, it at it's the kid. It's still, it's like that kid went flying over. backwards. Yeah, yes, he's not hurting him. Yeah, but it was. That's entertaining for me as well. No, not at. necessarily. You know. <laughs> okay. I got you. <laughs> well, um, all right. What else? I mean, so we're done with Elon and Twitter. It, we'll just wait to see kind of uh, I have another how thing. this all goes. So I have just like a Apparently, totally, it's not going to really be finalized. I have a total random okay, thing. Okay, good. With Elon, though. Uh, like, do, right. do you stay, do you have, have you been like keeping up with like this is the Elon Starlink? Show. His other, his other, not really. I should be. Well, because it's like the reason, like, so our our family has a lake house out in the middle of the desert. So internet's very tough, and satellite internet's the only thing that's available. The internet, yeah. And like, I was thinking something. And it's like extremely high speed satellite internet that Starlink is, right? Which is like holy, and like also it's like I want to buy a bunch of land and build a house like out in the country, and like my biggest fear is like, well, I work from home, so how do I do that if I can't get internet? out in the country, you know, I'm not going to work on some fucking shitty, yeah. you know, but anyway, the thing that's Hugh, the most Hughes net. Well, this is the thing. So I told you everything is a movie to me. So there was a movie, uh, what's his name? Like Ryan Felipe or whatever, uh, blonde guy, uh, from like the nineties yeah, movies. That's a guy. Uh, it's called antitrust, cruel intentions, Cru- the cruel intentions guy. Oh There's yeah. There's a movie called antitrust. And they're literally yeah. building exactly the same thing that Starlink is. It's a fucking circular connection of satellites that all connect. So that and they're what they're doing is taking over every media device. So like a phone, a TV, or whatever, all at one time. And it's called Synapse. Yeah. And like the the whole guy that's running it is like some fucking he doesn't care if you kill like developers and take their code. He's like, just whatever gets our product to the end of the line. And, uh, Ryan Felipe's character yeah. figures it out and hacks the whole thing or whatever. But the whole, uh, it's like Saves the world. every, like when you see the graphics of Starlink and it's like the globe and then you see all the satellites that go around it. Like if you look at that movie, it's literally uh-huh. the same fucking shit that you see on the screen. Like it's, it's fucking cracks me up every single time. But anyway, <laughs> it's not like, it's not anything. I'm excited for Starlink cause it makes it to where I can get high speed internet no matter where I live. And that excites me. Um, yeah. But no, I just, so is this, is this totally up and running and available uh, to the public? It's, it's almost like, um, 
I see you can it's order not it. It's not invite only, but it's more like a waiting list thing. So it's out. I, I know people that have it. Gotcha. Um, Mark actually has it at his uh, Space Ranch. Um, oh, really? Yeah, okay. so he just got it. Um, but it, what's crazy, though, is the speeds. Like, people are getting, like, 5 gig down from a satellite, where Switched. normally a satellite is, like, dial-up internet. <clears throat> Like normal satellite internet is like dial up, like yeah. where it's just like you couldn't watch a movie on satellite, you couldn't like stream a Netflix show, right? And this is like you could run a whole fucking network of anything from the satellite. Like it's like he's an alien. Like he's he's basically just giving us alien technology, and people need to stop fighting it and just like please alien Elon keep giving us everything that you'd like to give us, and we'll shut the fuck up. That's what I think needs to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, well, all the areas around us are on the wait list. But if you go to somewhere like Abilene or Lubbock or Amarillo, it's available. Amarillo it's available by in all of, I guess because he knows. I guess he's, it's probably being rolled out to the areas that really need it first. I would imagine. That, like that also have areas, people. I mean, he's yeah. not an idiot. You know, there's people there well, and yeah. they can't get it. So they yeah. would pay, you know, the price for this. Which, but Steven still, I don't think it's that much. I think it's like 200 bucks a month or something. Huh. Well, badass. Which is. That will allow us to all move to the middle of nowhere. Yeah. No, I mean. Because that's the only thing really holding us all back, right? I mean, it <laughs> really, I'm not kidding. That's what it's been my fear this whole time of like buying land and building a cool house somewhere. I know you're like, not kidding. Why? <laughs> no, but it's like, it's a big deal. Like, yeah. it's like we do, like, I don't, I don't have cable. I haven't in years. Like everything is internet. If the internet goes out, we're like fucked. Right? Like right now. Cause it's like, we do everything yeah. online. Yeah, I'm with you. And so, in, in theory, I'm thinking, like, the reason that the internet goes out is some kind of wire issue because it's underground and it's everywhere. So, in theory, wouldn't the satellite yeah. Starlink thing have less issues? It's more of a firmware thing, right? Like, if their code gets messed up, that's actually controlling something or beaming something down the wrong GPS coordinate or something. But other than that, it should be kind of money, Right. Or am I just like being too be positive? Solid, huh? Dude, <clears throat> uh, sounds right. I have no idea. Maybe it hits some uh, space trash. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, noise is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude. Yeah. Um, let's get signed up on the wait list, man. And we'll just, uh, you know, when it's available, we'll see if we need it. If you have the ranch... Um, you know, we'll get that shit. Fuck yeah. But dude, I got to run, man. I got to pee. It's a good show. It's the Elon. It's the Elon episode. I like Elon. I He sucks at customer service. <laughs> we talked about that a couple episodes ago. But uh, that motherfucker knows how to make some products. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Well, Ray, good catching up. Hey, everybody. Uh, use our promo code if you want to start a podcast with riverside.fm promo code is ux weekly get 15 percent off and please like and subscribe um i think that's it that's fucking it we did it all right sweet all right bro talk to you later like <coughs>